Hey and welcome back to another home automation quickie segment. Today we're going to be talking about uh, event driven automations and sensor driven automations and what these are is as opposed to a conventional automation uh, that you might already have that occurs when someone flips a switch or uh, opens an app on their phone and clicks a button or, or you know checks a box or flips a switch in Home Assistant these are the type of automations that require no human intervention to run. Uh, they run based on events and sensor data that are generated from your existing home automation system. And uh, in my opinion, these are the type of automations that set a true smart home apart from a house that just has a bunch of smart devices in it. Uh, these are the type of things that you know involve data processing of sensor data and your house or your home automation system to make a decision based on that data of how to proceed. So I've got a couple examples here. Uh, one's a little bigger than the, than the, the, the other, but um, let's walk, step through the first one first. Um, what this is designed to do is I have a HVAC booster fan in my daughter's uh, nursery. It's on the top floor, and uh, we noticed that this room is often a little colder in the winter and hotter than the summer than, uh, than the rest of the house. So we added a booster fan and we put it on a smart plug that has an HTTP API. And what we wanted to achieve with this is we wanted to make sure that that fan came on when the HVAC system was running so that it would you know pull the cold air or hot air into the room. And we wanted it to turn off when the HVAC system was not running. So we achieved this uh, we achieved this with some simple state polling. And uh, I'm gonna step through the automation right now so you can see how that works. So as a first step, uh, we are polling the state of the Nest HVAC system every one minute. And I'll show you what that looks like to the uh, home automation system. We'll throw a debug node and we'll see what kind of messages come out of this. So if I pull the state of the Nest HVAC, it will tell me it's off. And that can be one of three values. It'll either say off, heat, or cool, I believe, or off, heating, and cooling. Yeah, off, heating, and cooling are the three values that come out of that. So every time we pull the Nest HVAC, and that's coming from uh, the Home Assistant node, which is ex exposing sensor.hallway underscore thermostat Nest HVAC state. If you have a Nest or if you have an Ecobee, you'll have this same kind of uh, you know sensor that Home Assistant can, can derive out of it. So it pulls those values and then it puts and then it puts the message into a switch node. And in the switch node, uh, we split the three possible messages that can come from that state node: uh, heating, cooling, and off. Um, if it's heating or cooling, we then flow into a time range node. And in that time range node, since my nursery is usually unoccupied when my daughter's you know not asleep. Uh, we, we don't necessarily need to turn the booster fan on and, and draw that air away from the rest of the house when she's not there. So traditionally she sleeps between you know 7 p.m. and 8 a.m. On, on good nights. Uh, so that, that's the, the limiting factor we have here. We don't want this flow to continue and turn the fan on if it's outside of that time range because chances are there's no one in the room. So if it is in that time range, it passes the node and we make an HTTP call to the booster fan which switches it on. And uh, so this will continue to staple over and over and over. And as long as we're one of the two states here, heating or cooling, the fan stays on. If we state pull and we get an off message like we are getting right now, if we have a look, it's all off, uh, we will then flow into the bottom part of the switch node and we'll go into a one minute timer and then we'll turn the nursery fan off with an HTTP call. The reason we flow into the one minute timer is because if we just kind of, if the polling just kind of catches the moment that the Nest thermostat turns off, it's possible that the ductwork still has a, a fair amount of hot or cold air that we would we'd like to pull into the room. So we give it an extra minute to, to finish off and then we shut the, the fan off. So it's a pretty simple automation. Uh, it's proven to be super effective, super robust. We haven't had any issues with that fan not turning on or, or whatever. Uh, the next automation I have is a little longer. And what this is, is this is an example of how I use light sensors in my house. Now I have a lot of east facing windows and I've got a light sensor in my garage that's in one of the east facing windows. It's just a, uh, a photoresistor that, you know, a lot of you guys who make your own sensors will probably come across photoresistors quite a bit. Uh, I made a sensor uh, that sends MQTT messages and logs uh, its state in a database, in an influx database. 
And it basically uh, assigns a integer value to the amount of light that it sees. And I think that integer value is between 1 and 255. So if it's really bright, we'll, or, or sorry, if it's like daylight, not necessarily really bright, but, but a good amount of daylight, uh, we'll see a value over like 135, 140. And as it's starting to get dark in the dusk hours and, and when people would you traditionally want to turn their lights on, you see a value below, you know, like 75, 80. So we take the same approach here with... Uh, state polling to start the automation we we're pulling state i believe every five minutes for this one we don't want it to be too granular because during those dusk and morning hours sometimes the sensor can flip-flop back and forth between whether it's you know uh, light or dark uh, just as it's in that transition period and i don't want to have too much activity of lights flicking on and off as we you know settle into a full daylight situation or a full nighttime situation so again i uh I run it every five minutes. I have another time range node uh, that I set up to not run this um, outside the hours of 6 a.m. and 2.30 a.m. And the reason for this was that I just kind of want to run it during uh, daylight hours when people are awake. Um, there's no sense in having this automation proceed further uh, to switch lights on or off because no one's going to be around or awake to enjoy it. And I just thought it would be nice to limit it to this time frame to make sure I don't have any, uh, you know, nighttime situations where the sensor starts reading corrupt and flicking lights on and off in my house. So uh, from there, we are, instead of taking this, the uh, brightness value directly from the sensor, I am pulling it out of my influx database. Um, the sensor has its own polling interval, which where it writes uh, to the influx database its current value. So the data isn't always available from the sensor exactly when I need it, so I'll just pull the last bit of data out of Influx. And that also helps with some of the damping, dampening effect during uh, twilight and dawn hours. Okay, so out of that comes a pretty complex value, I believe. It's coming from Influx, and it's not the prettiest in the world. So I've got a couple parse nodes here, and I'm, I'll just show you why I'm using these. These probably aren't necessary for all situations. It just depends how dirty the data is that you're getting uh, from your sensors is. So I'll pull this and yeah, you can see here that it's actually coming out of Influx as an object and it's delivering the value uh, with, a, with a heading of mean. So this parse node here, I think it splits it by, splits it by line breaks and then splits by line break again. Now let's see, let's see what's actually happening in these parse nodes. It's been a while since I wrote this automation so it'd be nice to see close that and we will run this again oh I gotta deploy there we go alright so then by the time we get out of all the parse nodes it looks like we're just passing a, a, a regular value here it's getting out all the um, unnecessary bits so I see that there's a, a clean value coming out of this node I believe let's confirm that yes so it's getting a really clean value out of this node that it's then passing into a switch that's easier to uh, you know easier to um, get a <laughs> e easier to read the value from so then we make sure we select the right message because you can see there's two messages that come out of that parse node so we want to select the, the message that's titled mean and then it passes it to the thresholds node and the thresholds node is where we define you know what's too bright and what's too dark to, uh, to turn lights on and off so I'll just loop this back so you can see that the extremely clean value that's coming out of the two parse nodes and the switch node and you know maybe it's po it's quite possible that I'm not doing this in the most efficient way but it's a pretty lightweight operation so so I'll deploy that and then we can see yeah so it's getting a very clean value out of that now uh, which it then goes into the thresholds and de depending if it's above 140 or below 90 it'll set uh, the lights to off or set the lights to on and in both cases this switch node here is passing a specific or this change node here is passing a, sp a specific value to what I call the flow control and what that is let's deploy this clear and run oh, it's, it's a light off situation now I guess Okay, and so now we're getting an off message passed into this uh, function node, this flow control node. So 
So what this flow control does, now I could pass this off message directly into the off on, and the off on would act whether or not like based on the message that comes in, and it would either turn this group of lights off or turn this group of lights on. Now, the reason I added a flow control node is because what I want to avoid is if I go to watch TV in the evening when the lights are on, and I flick my lamp off to enjoy you know a, 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 sh a TV show or something on my in my living room, I don't want the lights to turn back on in five minutes because it's still dark outside. At that point, I've made the the, the decision to turn the light off. And the next time I want the lights on is um, going to be, you know, the, the next day when it gets dark again. I don't, I don't need my home automation system to be making that choice for me after I've directly told it to turn off. So I use a flow control node that is just a, a, a JavaScript API node that I've written so that this automation only affects the lights once per day. It'll turn the lights off when it's light once, and it'll turn the lights on when it's dark once. And... That way, we don't have any issues with if someone decides to change that after the fact. The automation uh, has, has occurred, and then the house is in the hands of the human for the rest of the evening. And the way I do that is coming into this uh, flow control node, I get the message payload, uh, whether, and it, it is uh, either off or on, and I pull whatever the current state is out of a variable that I have stored, uh, a global variable that I have stored in Node Red. So if the current state, if the current state does not equal the state that's coming in, we allow the, we allow to set, we allow the, the message to continue to pass through. So if the lights are currently off and we get an on message, then the on message is set to the current state value. No, oh, shoot. And then the message is then passed on to the switch node, which performs the activity. If the light's current state is already on, and we get another on message, uh, we just it just falls there. Now, it's important to remember the current state message is only recording what the, the last state that this automation derived. So if the last time this automation ran, it set the current state to on, and then I went ahead and switched the lights off, the current state is still set to on. Okay, and that might be a little counterintuitive, but you have to remember this variable is only in, used in this automation. So what that does is it allows the current state, it allows the, the automation to run, turn on the lights, set the current state to on, and then I can turn off the lights. And then the next time this gets an on message, it'll still match the current state value because the current state value doesn't change except via this automation and it won't turn the lights back on after I've turned them off and that's all by design so uh, I'll post this code in the in the comments this again it might not be the most efficient way to do it if you guys have a better way of doing this uh, please by all means let me know um, also I can see that I'm at the 13 minute mark here for this so this doesn't necessarily fit in the home automation <laughs> quickie uh, segment but I have done it in one take so uh, I'm still going to count it. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Next time, I will try to be a little more timely, but so I, I get a little bit into these uh, these explanations here, and, you know, time gets away from me. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions about these, I'd be happy to explain further. Um, uh, let me know if there's any other issues you see with it, if there's a way to make this more efficient, and, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.